She asked me for time and space. I think she wants to calculate speed. I like that one from Einstein. I don't think he actually said that, obviously. I think it's just a funny meme. All right, so let's talk about space-time diagrams. And we're going to do the simple version. What I mean by simple is that uh, we're going to do it with just one reference frame. Because you're going to see in another video, we're going to do it with uh, two different reference frames drawn on the same graph. But for right now, we'll keep it as straightforward as we can. Because they're still a bit wacky and weird. Uh, here's the problem. Um, we have this construct, this four-dimensional construct called space-time. We call it that because we've got space and time. And space is 3D, right, X, Y, Z. And then we have time together. So it's difficult to draw this. I mean, I don't know how to draw in 4D. So here's the issue. Because we can't draw in four dimensions, we do something really cheap. We're going to say, all right, take those three dimensions, you know, X, Y, Z, and let's just collapse them into one direction. And we'll just call it space. Some people use that as an X value, for example, just to sort of ignore the Y and Z. Basically, so we make, we collapse them all and just say space. And this is why we can do these diagrams called space-time diagrams. We put space on one axis, time on the other. We're used to seeing time on the X axis. However, space-time diagrams are almost always drawn with time on the Y axis. So that's gonna be something, just keep that in mind. So sometimes what seems logical is not going to be because of that. So just keep that in mind here. So we have time, T. This could be in years. It could be whatever. And this will be space. This could be X and it could be in light years. It could be whatever. Uh, so let's uh, talk about this. And maybe I can do um, some different. Uh, I'll do like a world line, for example. Let's do, let's do an example of this right here. So look at this one right here. So what do you think this would be a graph of? If you think about it, you think, oh, this person here doesn't uh, move, for example, right? But actually, well, in this case right here, yeah, they stay the same space um, and time goes up right here. So as time goes up, they stay in the same space. So what does that really mean? This person right here is at rest, okay? Um, if we had something that went, I don't know, like maybe like this, let's just say something like that. This would be at uh, constant velocity then, or constant speed. That could be an example of that. We could also have someone, oops, that's a really bad writing here. Huh? Constant speed. What if we had something like this? You know, something like this, for example, sort of goes up like that. So this could be someone who's sort of, you know, um, maybe is going slow um, and then actually speeds up. That's because, you know, the amount of space that they travel uh, versus amount of time right here. And uh, as it gets steeper, that means that uh, they don't do very much space. Actually, this would be actually going faster and then slowing down, actually. This would be because uh, over a given time, remember time is on the y-axis. So this would be someone actually goes faster, uh, then slows down. Because remember, to stop is to be going straight up. So see, this person is sort of going more and more sort of straight up. So this is how this can work. Uh, keep in mind, we can also have other kinds of space-time diagrams, and these are going to look really weird. We can also have them with this CT. So sometimes we like to do that instead. So sometimes we're doing with a CT, so we'll multiply T by C. Remember I talked about that when we did the space-time intervals. Um, this is uh, sort of like a distance within time. And we still have space here, and that could be, for example, X. Um, so if we have something like this right here, we could even have example, a straight line here like this right here, this could be a uh, speed of light, which means in this case right here, then you can't go faster than the speed of light. So there's going to be some sort of limitations on your space-time diagrams based on this. So let's do an example of a space-time diagram. I like this one here, if by some paradox in the space-time continuum, Chuck Norris would ever, you know, were ever to fight himself, he'd win. So let's actually go through a detailed uh, example of this. Maybe this is more than you need for your exams, but I think it's a good idea to really see the numbers put in. Uh, so let's take a look at this. So we're gonna have the time t in years on the y-axis, and we're gonna have space, and we're just gonna call it x, and it's gonna be measured in light years. Remember, light year is a distance. One light year is a distance that light travels in one year. So it's actually a distance unit. So we have this graph here, okay? So we have like this. So let's first start off by doing something fairly straightforward. We'll just do the uh, space separation. So we'll go from A to B. Let's see what happens there. So to go from A to B, let's see. In the X 
direction, which is this right here, you don't move at all. So your space separation in this case right here is zero, if that makes any sense. Whereas to go from, um, because you haven't, you haven't actually moved in the X direction, so to speak. From B to C, however, so now you're at B and now you go to C here. Your X value at B is one, but at C it's at minus 0.5, it looks like that. So that's 1.5. We don't actually care about the positive or negative. So we're just gonna say the 1.5 there. Now to get from C to D, let's see now. Here uh, D is sitting at two, uh, and you still have that extra 0.5 here. So it's gonna be 2.5. So now if we're gonna look at the time separation, that we can also look at. So from A to B, how much time has gone by in this regular frame here? Okay, so just in this sort of regular graph. If we look at this, the time separation T in years, let's see if to get from A to B, this remember the Y axis is the years. So in this case here, it went, you see it went from zero years to one year. So we have one year. To get from B to C, you went from one year to three years. So to get from one to three, it takes that takes two years, right? Because three minus one is two. Then if we look at this one right here, to get from C to D, how high have you gone here in the Y direction, which is time? You went from three to six, so that's three years. Now let's look at this. This becomes a little bit weird, but this is gonna be useful for the next part right here. This is gonna be like a little intermediate step. We can use this invariant quantity here. Remember when we talked about space-time intervals, we had the ct squared minus x squared. Here, I'll write the equation, actually. I'll write the full equation. It was uh, ct primed squared minus x primed squared equals uh, ct squared minus x squared. This is this space-time interval. What we're doing is we're just doing the right side of that equation. We're just looking at this piece right here. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. So if we look at this right here, it seems a little bit weird to have a C there, but you can essentially ignore it. It's a little bit sloppy, but you, you can do this for this calculation here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to consider T squared minus X squared. So in this case right here, the T is 1. So we're going to say it's, let's see here, we're going to say it's like 1 squared minus 0 squared. So that would be, let's see, 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 minus 0 is just 1. This one right here is going to be 2 squared minus 1.5 squared. If we do that, let's see, 2 squared is 4. What's 1.5 squared? We have 4 minus 2.25. So we have 1.75 here. And finally here we're going to have, let's see, that's going to be 3 squared minus 2.5 squared. If we do that, 3 squared is 9. 2.5 squared, and then when I have to do this, I end up with 2.75. Uh, now, why is it that I actually did that? What I want to do now is look at proper time. This is going to be the interesting part here. So we've done sort of the time separation right from this graph. But if you do this method without even applying, you know, sort of counting for relativity, you can still deal with this. You can figure out basically um, how much time has really gone by. Because if you look at this, the time separation, in other words, people on Earth, Let's say you're, you're in a ship while you're doing this. The people on Earth will think the whole journey took six years. Why is that? One plus two plus three. See that? So everyone, everyone on Earth who's watching this happen thinks it was six, a six-year journey. So three plus two plus one years. Let's look at what the ship thinks. I put the result, and I hope we're going to get this. Let's see. So if we do the advance of proper time, the way to do that, it actually comes from this. If you look at this equation right here, I want T primed here. Let's see that, I kind of, I want T prime, whoops. And um, this right here, this X prime right here is essentially the, well, that's gonna be zero because uh, I mean, within the ship, you're not actually moving from within the ship. You see that, I mean, the ship is moving with respect to earth, but not with respect to itself. So this will essentially cancel out. You end up with T primed squared equals this big mess right here, right? So T squared minus x squared. That means to get t primed by itself, well, technically there's a c there too, right? Uh, what we could do, we could be a little bit sloppy right here and actually sort of put it within it. So we're going to be a little bit sloppy and basically just say that t prime then is just going to be just a square root of this right here. We're going to sort of divide it by c, but not quite. So basically we're going to just take ct squared minus x squared, this piece right here, we're just going to take the square root of it and that's going to give us the proper time. We will have sort of ignored the C's twice, so we'll be okay.
So it's a little bit sloppy here, but this is actually commonly how it's done. I don't really like how sloppy some people get with this, but there we go. Uh, so let's look at this. If we do this right here, the advance of proper time then, so t prime, let's see here, t prime is going to be, in this case right here, uh, well, just square root of one, which is just one. In this case right here, we're gonna do the square root of 1.75. Let's see what that is. 1.75, let's do the square root of that, and I get 1.32, thank goodness. Roughly, it's 1.32287, but good enough. And then if we do the square root of 2.75, let's do that. So that's gonna be the square root of 2.75. We end up with 1.66. So what ends up happening is this. If you add up the proper time, so 1 plus 1.32 plus 1.66, remember, proper time is the time measured by the person in that rocket. That's because uh, for them, the event of flying around wherever they're going in the universe is all happening in the same place. Remember, the person in the rocket, nothing really changes for them. Everything zooms by them. For them, uh, you know, everything happens in the same location. So because of that, they're measuring proper time. So that means in your spaceship, you have your one year plus the 1.32 years plus the 1.66 years. And if you add those up, that's 3.98 years. Now compare this. So six years versus 3.98. So people on Earth think the whole journey took six years, right? You see that directly from here, from A to B, it took six years. Uh, a to D, sorry. A to D took six years. But on the ship, we had a little bit of calculations to do, but on the ship, you can see that it took... You know, you on the ship would think this journey only took you 3.98 seconds, uh, years, I mean. So because of that, this is an example of uh, time dilation. See, this is an example of how time is relative. You see that? You didn't even have to account for the gamma. So I was just trying to show you a different way of actually doing this, using space-time diagrams.